So this just arrived into the studio. I've been waiting for this one uh, since its announcement. This is the HP NV14. Uh, what I like about it is it has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. It has a discrete GPU, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti with Max-Q. It has 11th gen Intel processor. We'll get into that and more, but what I'm really liking about it so far, size, sheer portability, and its price. Let's get into it now. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the all-new HP NV14. Coming up. And while we're looking at the specs, I want to let everyone know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure that I'm not being paid by HP, I'm not being sponsored by HP, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. HP is not getting copy approval. HP seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, I purchased this particular unit with my own money, but HP will be sending me the Core i5 version for review this week. Now, I will be comparing this i7 version versus the i5 and will be featured in that full review. Now, once that review is done, I'll be sending back that review unit to HP. Pricing starts at $999 over at HP.com. Price as configured today, $1699.99. I'll put the link below for more information and where you can buy it. And with specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now, packaging is very premium, as we've come to expect with the NV line. You get some setup instructions, as well as a 135-watt power adapter that uses a barrel pin connector. You also get the extension cord as well. Holding the unit for the first time, the first thing that strikes me is how premium and how high-end this all-metal build is. rock solid build construction as well. I'm really liking it so far. And at 3.3 pounds or 1.5 kilograms, definitely not the lightest 14-inch laptop out there, but it is definitely one that gives you a lot of ports and has a discrete GPU, the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti with Max-Q. Now, I'm happy that HP makes it easy to get inside this laptop. You don't need to remove the rubber feet like you have to do in years past. Here, you just remove the T5 Torx screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. Now, once inside, you'll notice that it has dual fans for cooling. I'll get into all that in terms of the thermals and surface temperatures in the full review. Now, the good news is the SSD is user upgradable, although the one they give you gives you some very good reads and writes. As you can see here, it's one terabyte of NVMe SSD storage. Now, one thing to keep in mind, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. That means you cannot upgrade it yourself, and you can configure this with up to 16 gigabytes of DDR4-3200 SD RAM. It has Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 and working well on both fronts so far in my initial testing. Now, the Wi-Fi card is soldered into the motherboard. You won't be able to upgrade that down the road. And while we're inside, you'll notice that it has a 63.3 watt hour battery. Now, I just got this unit, but I'll let you know all the battery numbers and charging times in the full review. And for those wondering, yes, you can open the lid with one finger. Now, as we look at that keyboard, I got to tell you, so far, I'm really liking it. Really good key travel, excellent tactile feedback, really good layout as well. And I also like the dedicated button on the keyboard, allowing you to turn off your webcam. That's really good. And there's a two-stage backlit keyboard allowing you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. It also has a glass touchpad, really good precision touchpad, very responsive, two-finger scrolling, is buttery smooth, all the Windows 10 gestures work as advertised. Okay, let's check out the port selection. I gotta tell you, it's looking good. We'll start off on the left side. We get a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, a USB-A 3.2 port, an HDMI port, and your Thunderbolt 4 port. Now, this Thunderbolt 4 port does support data charge and display out. Moving over to the right side is a micro SD card reader for storage expansion, another USB-A port, and finally your power port. Remember, you could also charge this with that Thunderbolt 4 port. Now, to put its size into perspective, here it is next to its bigger brother, the HP NV15, which I reviewed in 2020. And I got to say, you can see the smaller footprint, of course, on the 14-inch version. And that's probably one of the big reasons people will want to get this, simply because of its sheer portability when you compare it to something like the HP NV15. But of course, keep in mind, the HP NV15 has an RTX 2060 GPU. So if you want to get more serious work done, even better than the 14, obviously, you'd have to consider that NV15. 
Okay, let's talk about that display. And what we're looking at here is a 14-inch IPS non-touch matte display. It has a resolution of 1920 by 1200. That means this is a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. It's also a very bright display coming in at 437 nits, making this a good choice for both indoor and outdoor use. It's got really deep blacks, good white points, excellent contrast, and it has a very low Delta E score, 1.01, meaning this is a very color accurate display. And it also covers the color gamut very well. 100% sRGB, 78% Adobe RGB, 80% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut, and 73% NTSC, making this an excellent choice for content creators that do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. And because this is a matte display, you don't get any unnecessary glare or reflections. You got to love it. And because this has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio, this is going to be great for productivity work, doing things such as Microsoft Office spreadsheets. It's going to be great. Shows a little bit more on the display. And it'll be great for web surfing as you'll do less scrolling. That's going to be a big benefit with that 16 to 10 aspect ratio. Bottom line, so far, I'm loving this display. So this is the front-facing camera on the all-new HP NV14, a 14-inch laptop, 16 to 10 aspect ratio. Uh, it's a 720p, 30 frames per second webcam. It's not infrared webcam in terms of Windows Hello. As far as face recognition, you cannot use that. But it does have a shutter switch or a key, actually, a dedicated key on the keyboard, allowing you to turn off the webcam, giving you more security and privacy. I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in the comment section below. The HP NV14 is running the Intel 11th generation processor. It's the Core i7-1165G7. It also has a dedicated GPU. It has the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1650 Ti with Max-Q. And as you can see from my initial testing on it so far, it's looking pretty good. Things such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, everything handled with a breeze. You could do some gaming on this as well as video editing. I'll talk more about that in the upcoming full review. Now, as far as thermals are concerned, everything is looking good so far. The fans aren't too loud and it doesn't get overly hot. Again, I'll have to bring you all the numbers when I bring you that full review. And I've been very impressed with the speakers so far, actually getting pretty loud, filling up a room rather nicely, a hint of bass, nice mids, and I thought it really was actually pretty good. Now, of course, you could always get an even better audio experience by adding wired headphones or Bluetooth headphones for that matter. Okay, to bring it home so far in my initial testing with the HP Envy 14, I'm really liking it. I like the form factor with the 14-inch display with that move to a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. This is going to be great for content creators. This is going to be great for productivity, people who want to get work done. Now, as far as everything else with this, I still got to do my further testing with it. I like the fact that it has a discrete GPU, the GTX 1650 Ti with Max-Q. So I'm expecting video editing to be good. I'm expecting to do some gaming on this, of of course. And most of all, I love its price to performance ratio, a really good starting price, making this very competitive with some of its competitors. I definitely think HP has a winner on their hands. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.